Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Oof, I'm pretty damn tired, I have to say. I did four hours of streaming today with an Arvis Starcraft. Yes, that, that's what he calls himself. But apparently he plays WoW as well, so... We we're doing a bit of streaming of SK Gaming's Heroics, and lots of people showed up for that, and thanks for that. It's much appreciated. It was a good amount of fun, and I believe the VODs will be available on this YouTube channel in the next couple of days. That's a lot of content, folks. That's about four hours today, and we're looking at doing some raiding tomorrow. This is the first time I've actually got to go into WoW since Cataclysm launch and actually do anything. You know, I did a little bit of recording for Azeroth Daily today. I did the recording of the little Deathwing pet, but I haven't got to play the game yet. So, I'm going to record everything I do in WoW from here on in. I went to Asda, the local superstore, and picked up a Western Digital Elements terabyte hard drive, which I'm using solely as my dump drive for Fraps footage now. Haven't built my new rig yet. Need to get on that. Whatever. I'm going to be recording everything, and all of my leveling is going to be documented. So my leveling might be a little bit slow. And you might think, well, Total Biscuit, that's terrible, because I want you to get onto raiding and stuff ASAP. Well, I might have raid footage coming from other sources, let me put it that way. And it'll be a far ahead of what I am doing at the time anyway, so that's going to be good for you guys. Whatever the case, I decided I'm going to start in Mount Hygel. I never did any of this in the beta. Not a sausage. I showed you the intros, but I didn't do any questing. And that's actually kind of cool, because I finally get to enjoy the questing for what it is, as opposed to thinking, well, oh no, I've done everything else in the beta. Ugh. And this is the intro to Mount Hygel. You'll have seen it before on my channel, I believe. We have Drama Dragon right here. He's very, very upset about everything. Oh, it can't be. Our forward outpost has been obliterated. Oh no, the forward outpost! <sighs> Yeah, he's some ridiculous cartoon character. It's not the best intro to anything, although you do get to see some epic stuff, and no doubt some of you have seen this already. This is going to be a fairly short video. I feel Deathwing's presence nearby. And the reason for that is simply I just I don't have the time nor the energy to do anything else today. I spent about six hours doing groundwork for Azeroth Daily. Daily shows aren't going to take that long. Ah, it's you again. I can never get away from him. Such a wonderful model, though, isn't he? Just look at that. And a not so wonderful model. <laughs> the Fire Lord has risen. We must send word to the others. Let us hurry. Let us hurry. We need a couple of level 80s to down this level 60 raid boss that's entirely incapable of moving. Why are we scared about Ragnaros again? He can't move. He's stuck there. You just cordon that area off. Just have, you know, say a half a mile zone where people aren't allowed to enter. Put some signs up. Say, danger, rampant fire lord. And just leave him there. He's stuck. He can't move. He's not going to be able to do anything. And for God's sake, you've got the lava in the middle. He'll be happy there. He'll just swim there for all eternity and occasionally shout, by fire be purged. And then maybe gank Major Domo Executus if he happens to show up, which seems fairly unlikely. It's all cool. I don't see why they're stressing out. Oh, well. I say, it. this is this is a comparatively short video to the stuff that I'm going to be doing in future. You used to, like, half an hour videos from me on questing. That's what you're going to be getting. And obviously the questing is going to be part of Azeroth Daily as part of the daily grind as well. But right now, it's like, I'm going to get a few quests done, and then I'm going to do a little video just so that I've put something else up today, and then I'm going to bed. Although, I do have a Blu-ray copy of Inception that I'm very tempted to watch. You might also notice that I've set up a new tab on my chat. It's called Questing. This mode I can now switch to while questing so that you guys aren't bothered by whispers and general nonsense in general and trade chat and stuff like that. Although I'm still... Yeah, I still don't quite think I've got everything I need in this. Like, for instance, for some reason, like my yells and stuff aren't coming through. So I need to still work on it. But hey, you know, as I say, Questing mode on my chat will be kind of helpful. But I think I forgot something. Ah, yes, my ever-faithful companion. Ever since 2005, it is Murky. Yes, Murky is the bring-out of a thousand whispers. Everyone always asks me, where do you get Murky from? How I get Murky? And evidently, they were utterly unable to use Wowhead or Google. And my response became, after a while, you know, I was fairly patient initially. And then after about two years of this, I got a little sick of it. So I started telling people that they had to go to the Swamp of Sorobs and farm Murlocs for a rare drop. And that rare drop was about 0.001%. Did some people go and do it? 
yes. Am I a mean bastard? Without a shadow of a doubt. Did they deserve it? Absolutely. Now, we're being asked to report to Malfurion to find out what the hell is going on around here. However, there are a couple of quests you might want to pick up initially, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I am fortunate I might have to be on a fairly low population server, which is mostly controlled by troll phase. So, most of our guys are slightly ahead of me now, which is why having a little bit of a delay in questing was very beneficial to me. I don't have to compete for mobs. The Alliance presence on the server is virtually non-existent, so PvPing should be few and far between, and when it does happen, it should be in a one versus one environment, as opposed to mass gank squads, but you, know, you never know. Mount Hygel is a very large zone. You'll have seen my flyover video, and if you haven't, I'd suggest that you do, because there's a lot of really neat stuff. Unfortunately, the opening quest is perhaps the dullest thing they could possibly come up with. Kill eight elementals. Yeah. It's totally thrilling. At least they did make it a little bit like a battle, and they also do a good explanation of why these guys are actually attacking you in the first place. This is linked into the second quest right here, and that quest is called Inciting the Elements. And Inciting the Elements is a nice little gimmick, something that you're going to see throughout Cataclysm leveling content, whether it be the revamped Old World stuff, or whether it be the brand new zones. They try and take an initial concept, like, say, in vanilla, that quest would be Kill Four Inciters. In Cataclysm, it's find some juniper berries to feed to some fairy dragons who will then find you the hidden inciters and then you kill them. And that makes it so much better. That, that little element, that little twist to all of these otherwise incredibly mundane quests is what actually gets me into it. So I was down at the Cataclysm launch in London and I got the uh, opportunity to speak to Fargo. Fargo is Dave Kosak. Dave Kosak is the maker of the Flintlock comics, and you'll notice Flintlock is a character in the game now. He also now works for Blizzard. And I was talking to him, and I got a few minutes with him. He was really, really busy, but he actually asked me what my favorite part of Cataclysm was, and I, I said, the fact that you've made me who is a dedicated kind of raider and has always really only been interested in raid content, want to quest again. I think that's probably the biggest triumph you could have ever possibly come up with from my personal subjective perspective, because I didn't think that was possible. But hey, they have done it. They really, really have. I know the Cataclysm leveling content has already been beaten by a lot of people, and I'm, I'm just going to take my time. I'm just going to chill. Obviously, I want to video all of this for you so that you've got the opportunity. If you want to rush through the content and you then just want to watch me do it, say, I'll explain the lore and stuff like that, why don't you do that? That sounds reasonable, right? If you just want to grind in dungeons and you don't want to do any of this stuff, but maybe you want to watch someone else do the hard work for you, cool, because that's what you're going to be getting a lot on this channel. A lot of Let's Play style content for World of Warcraft and also Azeroth Daily on a daily basis. Alongside other cool stuff, the StarCraft stuff, the WTF stuff, the interviews, everything like that. But yeah, I, I do enjoy this. It, God, it's so weird. It's so hard to be cynical about it as well. And I know that's my job, really, but they just have done such a great job with the questing content. Admittedly, the Scalding Elementals is kind of lame, but you can't expect every quest to be absolutely wonderful, can you? And at least it's linked in somewhat. They actually give you a more interesting quest that explains the presence of the Elementals anyway. And it does so in a, a way that it, it tells the story through action and not through quest text. You know? And quest text... I've said this before, and... It is true, and you might be spurging out about the fact that I'm not actually buffed right now, and I realized this as I was just going through it. I was like, I'm so tired. Oh, yeah, I've got buffs, don't I? Might want to turn those on. Oh, man. But I think it's arrogant for a developer to expect people to want to absorb all of the story simply by reading quest text. I think that's a very arrogant assumption, and I think that the technology has moved past that, and that storytelling should be done in a much more interactive way. Blizzard has now accepted that. They accepted a little bit of it in Wrath. They were getting there. You can see the obvious stepping stone between Outlands questing content and Cataclysm questing content. I've said it before, and it's absolutely true. The area that Wrath excelled was simply in the questing content. The questing content was really great, and it was the best they've ever done. Cataclysm is now the best they've ever done, and the advantage with Cataclysm is that the questing content is not the only good thing. There's a lot of other really, really good things. So, I'm happy about that. I really am. 
No doubt I'll become less exuberant and more cynical as I go through this zone, but for the time being, I'm happy feeding my fairy dragons juniper berries as they discover the hidden... Oh God, it's a rock elemental. It wants my face. It's not going to have it, however. WE is here for backup. Mm. You know, I want to rename him that, and for some reason, I don't think that pet rename thing works anymore. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'll have to have another look into it. I googled the little command, and apparently I can't rename my pet, which was quite upsetting, but hey. Ah, buff consolidation. Very, very nice. I'm not the kind of person that likes to see buffs all over the screen, so buff consolidation in the corner, just putting it all under that little icon. Pretty damn handy. I know what I'm buffed with. It's fine. Go find me an evil one, little dragon. You know, I'm surprised the insiders don't turn around and actually smack the dragon. Evidently not. Are those guys wearing Earth Fury? I think they are, you know. Oh, wow. That brings back some memories, I tell you. That stuff always dropped. We had nothing but Earth Fury all the time. Ugh. Yeah, that was horrendous. And it's so nice to be able to fly as well. I didn't really do any questing with the addition of a flying mount, so... You might ask, well, Total Biscuit, that's ridiculous. Surely you did it in Wrath. Not really. I was kind of in a protesting mood. I refused, point blank, to buy cold weather flying. Point blank. Until I got to maximum level, because I viewed it as a leveling tax, and I hated it. So I did all of my stuff, with the exception of Storm Peaks, where I had to use the loan amount, the little loan amount, the slow-ass loan amount, just because... There was just no other way to do it. I have completely avoided buying cold weather flying. <sighs> I was such a young fool. No, actually, that was entirely justifiable, and I still agree with it. Oh, well. It's all good. Hey, I've got an item. And you know, that might replace some, but I'm just going to keep my 4p set bonus for the time being. And I realize that my bars are so messed up after so long not playing. Disenchanting. That might be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, let, let's get a little bit of Ding going on right here. Let's get some mats. Oh, yes. Goodbye, rock breaker robes. I refuse to wear thee. Now, I'll come back to this tomorrow, folks, with some real content as opposed to just a few quests. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thanks for watching. Go check out Azeroth Daily, and please do tune into the stream tomorrow for more of that SK Gaming goodness and some raiding. I will see you next time.